let's talk about some saxophone gear. What's up everybody? My name is Scott Paddock and today I'm going to run you through my complete tenor sax setup. Whenever I post a video of me playing the tenor sax on social media, I always get a whole bunch of questions about my gear. So today I thought I would do a complete run through of my entire setup. So let's start from the top with my saxophone. I play a P Marriott 66 RX Influence. I've been playing this horn for about seven years, maybe going on eight years. Um, I started off with the alto version of this, which is the 67 RX. I loved that so much that I went ahead and tried out the tenor version and just fell in love with this horn also. It's an absolutely amazing horn. It's got a huge sound, super easy to play. It cuts through really easily, great dynamics, all of the things that you want in a saxophone. So this one is the unlacquered version. That is the only thing I regret. Like I like the way it sounds, I like the way it looks, uh, but having an unlacquered saxophone, it takes a little bit more care and time to deal with because you get these uh, corrosion marks all over it, this little blue corrosion stuff that you see all over it. So if I had it to do over again, I probably would get the dark lacquered like the rest of my other P Marriott's. So a couple things that are different about this saxophone than other saxophones. First off are the key touches. The key touches are sterling silver. So it's almost like the same thing as a flute key touch. So you don't have the abalone shells or any of that stuff. You have soldered on sterling silver. Uh, it also is a big bell saxophone, so it's going to project a little bit more and have a little bit more sound to it. The sax itself is pretty stock, except I did alter the palm keys. I added some sagru to it so I could custom fit it so it fit my hand a little bit better. Uh, as is, they're pretty low and they're, they're very difficult to get to, especially the F palm key. So you're going to see that on a lot of P Marriott's. You're going to see guys who have added sagru or some type of moldable thing so that they can customize the palm keys on their P Marriott's. As for the rest of this axe, I do have a repairman. His name is Jeff Denning. I've been going to him for years and years and years. He knows exactly how I like my saxophone set up. So he took care of that as far as the uh, spring tension and uh, key height and all that kind of stuff. He knows exactly what I like. So whenever I get a new horn, I always take it to him and he sets it up for me. Now I am a P Marriott artist. I actually have endorsement deals with most of the gear that I play, but I don't play any of the gear that I play because of an endorsement deal. I play everything that I play because I really, really like it. And then once I really, really like it, I usually end up having some type of relationship with that company and then they reach out and we come up with some kind of agreement. So that's what you're gonna see with most endorsement deals. If you want me to do a video on that, leave me a comment below. But with endorsement deals, they don't send you free stuff hoping that you will play it. They want to find people who love their gear and then they want to have a relationship with them that is mutually, mutually beneficial. So that's how all of my endorsement deals work. Let's get back to the saxophone. So everything is stock except for my neck. About a year ago, I got this uh, Boston Sax Shop Heritage Neck. And this one is sterling silver, although mine is very tarnished, so it doesn't look quite as silver as it once did. So I switched next because being an alto player, playing tenor also, I had problems with stuffy notes, like my middle D and E were both really stuffy. And I saw several people talking about this neck helping with that problem. So to me, it was worth it. Um, the neck is very similar to my stock neck, except it's a little bit brighter, which I like and it makes the D and D sharp and E a lot less stuffy. I would say that this neck has gotten me closer to the sound that I was looking for by about three to 5%. And as a pro sax player, if you can change out a piece of gear and get three to 5% closer to the sound you're looking for, that is a no brainer. You're gonna do that every time. So I have the P Marriott 66 RX saxophone with the Boston Sax Shop Heritage neck. Next up is the piece of gear that I am asked the most about, which is my tenor mouthpiece. This is a Sayos Scott Paddock Artist Series. So obviously I have an endorsement deal with them because my name is on the mouthpiece. So this came about uh, when I was on tour with Edos Ramazzotti. I was already playing their soprano mouthpiece um, and Pauline, who was one of the owners of Sayos, saw that I was gonna be in Paris and asked if she could bring me some mouthpieces to try while I was there. They already knew what type of mouthpiece I, was, I liked and what I was into because they made my uh, soprano mouthpiece. And of course they'd heard zillions of videos of me playing the saxophone. So they brought about 20 tenor mouthpieces for me to try. And I put this one on and fell in love with it and never took it off. 
So this mouthpiece has a size eight tip opening. It has a high baffle and a small chamber. So it's got a really big, powerful sound, but I, I can also play soft and subtle with subtones. This has got a really, really high range. It squeals out altissimo. It's just a really, really great saxophone mouthpiece. So I did a complete video on this. If you'd like to check it out, I'll put a link in the video description, but this is my favorite tenor mouthpiece I've ever played by far. Before this, I was playing a Barclay Brazil Custom Pop 8. I think it was a size 8, but I'm not sure. Uh, that's what I was using up until I played this, and the day I played this one, I never took it off. I absolutely love this mouthpiece. If you're watching a video on tenor sax gear, then I'm guessing that you are a saxophone player. If that's the case, then I'd like to invite you to come check out the Scott Paddock Sax School. In my sax school, I take the guesswork out of what to practice, how to practice, and what to practice next, and give you a really clear step-by-step -step pathway on how to make it to the next level. So if you'd like to add some structure into your practice routine, then check out the Scott Paddock Sax School today. I'll leave a link in the bio. The ligature that I use is a BG Silver Duo made by BG France. So I use this same ligature on all of my saxophones, alto, tenor, berry, and soprano. This one is silver, but uh, it's very tarnished, so you can't really see the silver anymore. They make them in different uh, materials, and those different materials have different char characteristics. The silver is brighter and a bit more powerful, and that's kind of usually what I go for with my sound. So that is the one that I chose. I really like this ligature. It's pretty simple. It's got two little rails here, one screw at the top. It's a great ligature, super dependable, super reliable, and I really like the sound of it. Reads, reads, reads. The tenor saxophone reed that I use is a Leger Signature 3.0. So that's what I use when I'm at home and doing local gigs. However, if I'm on tour, especially if I'm touring with a rock band, I go up a size to a 3.25. So I do that because usually when I'm on tour, the way I'm playing tenor saxophone is big solos with lots of altissimo. So there's no wind up, there's no softs, there's no subtones, there's none of that stuff. It's usually you hit the gas and you keep going and you end up squealing out a high note at the end of the solo. So a 3.25 will last longer and just give me a bigger, fatter sound, especially when I'm putting a whole bunch of air through it. <laughs> Now, a lot of people have asked me about the American cut on tenor sax. That's what I play on the alto. I really like it on the alto, but on the tenor, I prefer the sound and the feel of the signature. I often get asked what microphone that I use. When I'm at home recording content for my sax school or YouTube or Instagram or any of that kind of stuff, I use a Shure Beta 98H. So this is just a clip-on mic. Clip-on because you clip it onto the bell. It's super simple. I like the way it sounds. Uh, if I play a low B or a low B flat, it gets a little crazy because it's right at the end of the bell. But I really like how this mic sounds and how easy it is. I never have to think about it. I just put it on and it works. Now, I also live in Baltimore City and there's all kinds of crazy Baltimore City sounds going, outside, going on outside of my house. If I use a nicer, fancier room mic, that picks up everything. With this microphone, it only picks up my saxophone sound, so it makes it way easier when it comes to recording gear at my house in Baltimore City. When I'm playing a live show, I almost always use a Shure wireless system. I love a wireless microphone. I do not like standing in front of a microphone at all. I move around, I dance around, I'm doing all kinds of stuff when I'm performing, so standing like a statue in front of a microphone just feels awful to me. So you, all, you are almost always gonna see me performing live with a Shure wireless system. I have several saxophone stands that I use in my house. The one that I use the most for my tenor is the Hercules Tall Grab Sax Stand. So it's called a grab because this closes when the sax bell goes in it so that it won't fall out. It's tall because it's tall, it's adjustable. Um, so I use that one a lot. I like the way it looks in videos and I like having it elevated. I also have these smaller Hercules stands all over my house. I probably have five or six of them uh, just because I never know where I'm going to be playing my saxophone. I always want to have a stand for it. 
So I have these all over my house. And when I'm on tour, I use a K and M stand. So these are really small and compact and super easy to use and most importantly, lightweight. So when you're traveling, especially with a lot of gear, you have to deal with uh, airport luggage maximums, uh, maximum weights. So these stands, especially that one and this one are both pretty heavy. This one is very, very light. So it's not gonna cut into the weight of your luggage at all. And it's also very compact, so it'll fit in pretty much any saxophone case. Speaking of saxophone cases, the case that I use is the one that came with my saxophone. So this is the P Marriott contoured case. It looks a whole lot like a, a Protec case. So I'm assuming it's the same manufacturer. I really like this case. It's super secure and it's got a lot of pockets. So it's easy to carry a lot, carry a lot of stuff. Uh, I've been using these type of sax cases for a very long time. When I'm traveling, oftentimes I'll bring both my alto and my tenor. However, I can't bring them both on the plane as carry-ons. So I will check my tenor. When I check my tenor, I have a case that's made by Battle Cases, uh, which is a Pelican case that the inside is cut out for a tenor saxophone. This is a super strong, super secure case, and it makes traveling with saxophones very easy. Now, they aren't super easy to get around, although the tenor case isn't that heavy and it does have wheels. It's still not something that you would want to use on gigs, but if you're traveling and you need your saxophone to be safe, uh, the battle case is fantastic for this. I also have a larger version of this case for when I'm on tour and I need three saxophones. So this fits alto, tenor, and soprano. Uh, this case is great for touring, especially if it's going on a truck and you have roadies who are taking care of your gear. It is not convenient at all to carry around on a gig because it's very heavy. It is over the weight for luggage uh, on airplanes, so you're always gonna have to pay extra. But if you need a super secure case, if you're traveling a lot for all three saxophones, this is a great case. As a disclaimer, I am an endorsing artist of several of these companies, P Marriott, BG France, uh, Legere, and Sios. They did not pay me to do this video. They didn't even know I was gonna do this video. Um, I do get some free gear. I do get discounts on gear, but that has nothing to do with why I play the gear that I do. I play the gear that I do because I really like the way it sounds and it performs for me. So that is a complete rundown of my tenor sax setup. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. If you'd like to dive deeper into my saxophone world, I'd like to invite you to check out the Scott Paddock Sax School.